As you approach Harrison in Arkansas, there's obvious signs of a very public battle with racism. A former Confederate state, it's grappling with a problematic present. Trying to escape the shadows of America's oldest hate group. In nearby Zinc is the headquarters of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. I'm here to meet Thomas Robb, the national director. He's unrobed and suited. Well, this here is our, our office, and we do clerical work here, membership applications and, and reports, and then, of course, uh, we reproduce DVDs here and so on. It's a family enterprise for Thomas and his daughter, Rachel. Are you in, and it, this is you? Yeah. Do you still take part in public parades? Well, we hold a, uh, a parade, I guess you'd call it, in Pulaski, Tennessee, each year. The Klan has declined significantly. It's fractured. But there is a new era of tension. Are you worried about the future now? That there will be more violence? I think there will definitely be more violence. I think whatever, whenever a politician or a preacher or a newscaster only wants to condemn the white nationalists in Charlottesville, but doesn't want to equally condemn, at least, at least equally condemn, the Antifa and the Black Lives Matter and the anti-white demonstrators, it emboldens them. They're, they're desecrating our cemeteries, they're wanting taking down monuments of our heroes, they want to urinate on our, the symbols of our faith, and we're supposed to just accept it? And if we offer just a, a whimper of po protest, we're considered haters and bigots and monsters and Nazis? There's nothing about your message that's mainstream, is there? Well, look at to those who voted for Donald Trump in 2016. I think our message is mainstream. We don't promote hatred of anybody. We think everybody has a right to love their heritage and culture. But we're concerned with the how come when white people say, I love my people, I love my heritage, they want to call that a racial hatred. The Klan's official newspaper endorsed Donald Trump, but he clearly disavowed the group and said he didn't want to energize them. In the 1920s, it had as many as four million members. Now it's estimated there are thousands, many at war with each other. Just because people are talking about the Klan doesn't make them powerful. Well, I never said, I didn't say anything about being powerful. We're not powerful, and I have no illusions of being powerful. But the fact is, we have a voice, people respond to it. Whether that voice, whether people join the Klan or become involved in the white nationalist movement, I don't care. I'm not trying to make the Klan the biggest club, if you want to use that phrase, in the country. How do you feel about African Americans? I think they have a right to be African Americans. The same way I have a right to be white. Gay people? I think gay people is an abomination. Hispanics? Same as blacks, same answer. He markets his group as Christian, rebranding the Klan as the first alt-right organization. He tries to make white supremacy sound almost normal. Yet he also seems comfortable being confined to his own isolated enclave. <laughs> 